Thank you, Dennis. Okay, I got a question. Can you hear me okay? Um, I just realized that I had this other input on, and let me know if this is better sounding or more reverby. That's this microphone. Can you hear that? I, uh, I, can, I can move this mic more into position, and then maybe you can hear, but it might, I don't know if it's going to distort, hear my voice better, and it's also kind of in the way of my hands. That's why I've not used one of those mics uh, for my live stream. So, and I can turn up the mic on the camera, which is this one. We have a ways to go there, but sometimes when I'm playing like drums and tracks and things like that, it tends to uh, distort. So, so here's with this mic on right now. Um, hey, Pierre. I think I saw you were here last week or a couple weeks ago. Um, and then this is without that mic. Without that input, I'm not even sure. Well, I know for sure it's this mic. I just don't know if it's going to you or if it's helping or hurting. And I can, I can, like I said, I can bring it into play, uh, but I just get it out of the way of the. There we go. There's the free range groove on the Gobachon. It's a B note. You can tune it to whatever note I want, but. Um, I got this guitar out just because I feel like you guys haven't seen it in a while, or maybe never. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever used it for my live stream. Okay, let me see who's on and say some shout outs, give you guys some shout outs. So you can feel special. <laughs> no, I'm, oh, you little people. <laughs> I'm so Hollywood. Uh, hey, Sam, good morning, good afternoon, and pleasant evening to those across the pond. Indeed. I know, I wish we got some Australian viewers, but it's like three in the morning there, or four in the morning or something. So, uh, Bob Schumann, good to see you. Dennis, thank you for helping out there with the bots. Paul Meyer, lurking and working. Uh, JP, good, good. Uh, Lena, great to see you. Yeah, so we're going to work on this free range groove. Um, and it, it's a, it's a groove that, um, hey, Fuller, uh, I, I said, uh, is Angela Fuller. Okay, Angela, good to see you. JP, uh, said hi. Let's see. Uh, Dennis, I don't need to say hi to the XYZ person. Uh, David Siller is good to see you in Scotland, I believe. I think, I think Beth and I may try to visit Scotland next year. We'll see. Uh, Paul, and I saw, okay. Uh, P oh yeah, Peer Peerhead and Holly's in the house. Uh, sorry I'm late. Michael, Matthew, what's going on? I just sit through 25 seconds of ads. Oh shoot, well sorry. I do put non-skippable ads, but I thought the max was 15 seconds on those. Um, and I am going to I just went to last week's video and deleted all the ads that show up every five minutes. I put, I put one every 30 minutes or so, um, cause it's a three hour video or I'm sorry, two hour video. So I figure like every 30 minutes, not too much to ask. And I make a little money from those. So it just adds up. Um, let's see, so to speak adds up, get it. Ah. <laughs> so, and I do have a button here now. It says insert ad. Now the only problem with that, and I, the thing that's cool about that, is it won't insert an ad live. I don't think you guys didn't. See, I did this last week, and you didn't see an ad. Um, but what I can do is it helps me with revenue. I can say, okay, I'm going to show you the secret of this after this ad, and then click the button. <laughs> but everyone who's watching live won't see that. Um, the only problem is that when I go back, like today, I went back and looked at the. Um, last week's video and YouTube because it takes a while for that information to show up like two or three or four or five days um, I saw that they inserted an ad every five minutes and I'm like no so I'm deleting all the ads and I don't know which one of those ads keep in mind that's every five minutes for a two-hour video so there's a lot of ads in there so I'm deleting just hitting delete 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 
on all of them and I probably deleted the one that was like hey check out this ad <laughs> so I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that because I don't want to watch the whole video to see where I did that you know um, the only thing I could do is maybe turn off ads live and then add them later um, uh, I'm not exactly sure if I can do that um, but I could try but anyone logging in for the first time uh, you know logging in today and if you if you if you um, click off the video maybe if you close the window and then come back to my video you're probably gonna get another ad um, but like I said it does generate real revenue um, it helps but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try that I'm gonna go ahead and turn off monetization for now um, I'm bummed that they put a 25 second ad in that's kind of lame so I'm turning off monetization well but see I think for some reason though even if there's not an ad I make money I don't know how that works to be honest but um, so I'll leave it on for now I'll try to fix it afterwards oh thank you Matthew I hope you learned something you're in Canada so $14 Canadians like 12 cents US no I'm just kidding <laughs> When I was in, when I was, I went to Canada a couple times in the '90s and teaching clinics. I was in Vancouver, which was gorgeous. I was in Toronto, which I didn't dig as much. I don't know. I think I was kind of a little sick when I was there. Oh, let me turn on this mic, and you can tell me if it's any better. Hey, Bruce, welcome. Um, let me tune this bad boy. Um, but, but I was joking. Somebody said, oh, how much do those picks cost? And I said, well, it's 25 cents here in the States. But what is it? What is that? Like 20 cents in Canada? And then somebody said, what's the guitar cost? Or no, well, I said I did the opposite, actually. <laughs> yeah, I said, yeah, it's like 50 cents Canadian. And then <laughs> someone asked what the guitar cost. I said, oh, you know, this it's about $1,000, which is what, like 10,000 Canadian. And it just I kept getting worse. And I was complaining about the metric clock and how the hours were much shorter in Canada. <laughs> The hour just flew by. Hour was only 50 minutes. So anyway, that's my... Tarina. <laughs> Tor Toronto. Okay, that's better. So we're going to talk about this free range groove. And don't Google that because it's pretty much my made up name. And I, as I explained last week, when I... Um, Years ago, there was, uh, you know, here, living in California, they've got Bank of America, and, or no, it was Wells Fargo, I think, and it was a Wells Fargo ad, and there's a cowboy on a stagecoach, and he's, you know, they're, they're flying across the, the desert, and there's this... gosh that's a great groove so and it just to me I probably should have said, called it open range or something but it just it found you know it sounded like just what it, exactly what it was in the visual which is like riding a horse across the you know across the plains and um and so I just kind of developed that groove and I've used it a lot it's very common it's actually <laughs> wizard groove um, and which I knew so it was more of not so much that I didn't know the groove before it was more that I rediscovered it at me in the 90s after having played it Paul and we talked I think I mentioned asked you this last week did we was pinball wizard one of our songs that we played in our band it might have been Paul and I had a band in junior high school <laughs> so with Cal English so it was me, Paul Meyer, and Cal English. And I think, I think Cal's on Facebook. I think we're Facebook friends. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so this is a great, you know, it, it sounds really good. Well, it works on, shoot, it works on, you know. It works on bar chords too, but I just, I just like it on big, and this guitar is a perfect guitar for it. This Loudon, this is an Irish guitar, and um, made in Ireland, and it's a Loudon, 
I've had this for since 97. In fact, I bought this to teach those clinics. <laughs> I've told you this before. I'm sorry. I know it makes you mad. But then I got a, a like a call from Taylor Guitar saying, hey, what guitar do you want for the clinics? And I went, what? <laughs> they go, yeah, we're giving all the guitar players free guitars to use for the clinics. And I'm like, really? <laughs> so I've never given, gotten a free guitar. I, still, I haven't since. I think that's the only time I ever got a free guitar. And, um, uh, and so, uh, you know, I just, I didn't really know at the time, I didn't really know Taylor's cause, cause they were one of the sponsors. So they wanted us to play Taylor guitars. Um, and so I, I didn't really know their catalog and I said, well, what is everybody else getting? And they said, oh, everybody's getting 814s. I'm like, okay, send me one of those. So I didn't, you know, it was a very nice guitar, but I had just bought this guitar like the week before so that I could, um, uh, use it to teach clinics. And, um, my Gibson dub was, the pickup didn't work very well in it and it was kind of big and I, this is a little bit smaller and the case is a little bit smaller. And, um, so this was, this was technically the second acoustic guitar I ever had. So <laughs> yeah, right. My Matthew. Yeah, I can't, I can't do that, <laughs> man. Yeah, I wonder if I wonder if Pete Townsend's ever had rotator cuff surgery. <laughs> my friend's getting getting it next month. It's like my mom had it. She fell. She like she was in the Caribbean and she got got out of the shower onto the um, tile and it was wet and she slipped and fell and landed on her side like this and tore her rotator cuff. And she said it was the the rehab was horrible. The rehab is so painful. Um, I don't know if I'll tell my friend that. I'm actually going to be playing with him on two Wednesday, so. But, yeah. He probably knows. Everybody Googles that kind of stuff when you're getting ready to go under the knife, so. Hi, right, Jan, good morning. Good to see you. Oh, Cal's birthday is today. Happy birthday to someone who's not watching. <laughs> How did you, did you just keep in touch with Cal then, Paul? <laughs> That's funny. Oh, because he, you know, you went on Facebook. It's, that's funny. I need, we need to go. I need to go on Facebook and tell him we're like hanging out. Okay. So the the basically the thing you want to get down this groove is one hundred just solid sixteenth notes. All right. And the way you count sixteenth notes is one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Say that with me. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Consequently you're going to have downstrokes on the one, two, three, four, and the and of one, and of two, and of three, and of four. And the E's and U's are going to be up. So it's upstroke. So you've got one E and a two, and a three E and a four E and a... Yeah, I know Peter stuff, yeah. start out really slow like that um let me go ahead and do it for a second so because i'm like do, do i is it more of a flick of the wrist or am i using my full arm i think it just depends i think sometimes a flick of the wrist is good um for speed uh but maybe for energy or volume or and 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 don't don't take this the wrong way okay but for the visual of it okay now i've taught i've worked with a couple pop artists and um the first thing, you know, because they, they coaching them on playing guitar, and the first thing I, you know, like, they're not really going to be playing guitar, but they need to have a guitar on for the show or whatever. So I'm like, the first question I ask, like, how do you want to look? Where do you want to have the guitar? What's the visual you want to create? And then go from there. So sometimes you want to, again, this is true of all styles of music. Music is manipulation. All music is ma manipulation. And um, you're manipulating your audience to feel joy, to feel angst, to feel anger, to feel sadness, whatever. Um, and visuals go along with it. Paul, uh, uh, Paul Anka famously said, people hear what they see, which is why he always liked his band to be dressed up and wearing suits and everything. Um, and he always looked nice. It was like people would, if they were all like dressed in jeans and ratty t-shirts, they would hear something different. I'm sure there's all sorts of studies on this. 
Um, but so a lot of times, you know, having that full arm move on this creates a bigger, bigger visual or a more dramatic visual than just and all the more, all the reason why Pete Townsend was doing the windmills, 100% the reason why Pete Townsend was, was for the visual. It wasn't, it wasn't for the, for the accuracy or the, the, and he would whip it around so fast. I'm like, oh my gosh. And one time he's, he was playing a, a Strat and the, he's, jammed his hand on the whammy bar, stabbed his hand with the whammy bar. I'm like, oh man, that's brutal. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's about keeping that eighth note, I mean, 16th note feel going. Um, and I'm just playing an E chord. And what you might want to do is go from E to E sus. So E is open, two, two, one, open, open. So E is zero two two one zero zero and an E sus oops not sus E E sus is zero two 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 zero zero um, so just play the E chord with your first finger on the G sharp your first fret of the third string put your second finger up here on the second fret of the fifth string and your third finger right underneath it don't let it get up there now we're playing flamenco same groove though, <laughs> ironically. Um, but yeah, get that those, that second and third finger on the same fret, and then when you want to do the sus, add the pinky. Now, if you want to be melancholy, you, we're adding the pinky on the on the second fret. So all three of these uh, fingers are on the same fret on fret two. But if you want to make be more melancholy, you can go up to one more fret. <laughs> so if you really want to. It's kind of a Lydian sound, right? Uh, that gives us a sharp four. So, uh, but the reason I want you to go back and forth between E and E sus is so you it'll help you keep track of where one is because that's when we're going to change that. So I'm going to play it at basically full tempo just so you can hear what I'm talking about. One, two, three, four, and play that groove. Uh, so I'm not going to make you do that. <laughs> if I can't do it, you can't. I mean, you might be able to. But, all right. How many do we have? Anybody looking? Uh, 20, 28, not bad. All right, all right. So we can grow this. All right, so uh, somebody want to post that I'm... Oh, uh, Holly usually does that, don't you? Let me put it up on Twitter. Oh. Uh, back here oh no I gotta save those changes okay all right oh here we go do this ah. delay echo yeah is it too echoey is it, should I turn off this microphone Just tweeted. All right, so so what you want to do is just kind of keep that arm moving. Do this with me. Hopefully, you can keep up with this. One and two and oh, sorry, one e and a two. Okay, one, two, real slow. One, two. Three, four, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one.
TikTok, yeah. but I deleted it off my phone just because I was like hearing a lot of weird stuff about it. I'm like, yeah. I mean, I'm not doing anything weird, but <laughs> but you know, I don't necessarily want them to record every keystroke. Is what I was hearing. So uh, I'll I'll open a new window and put in Mastodon. Hopefully, it's not a porn site. <laughs> Let's see, Masta, Mastodon. Let's see, I already spelled it wrong. Okay, Mastodon social media. Okay, I'll check that out. Oh, I see. It's it's kind of like like they don't retain information. You know, like information. Like it's it's like uh, what's the what's the shoot? What's that search engine? It's like one of those searches. Yeah, I'm gonna order a uh, orbital sander. I got we Alex and I have a little project going. Oh, and I got. <laughs> oh, do you do you see the new instrument back there? Can anybody see it? Let's see. There, there's several new instruments back. Yeah, well, not that several new, but there's one, there's a weird instrument. <laughs> Remind me. I'll do an ad and then I'll show it to you. <laughs> okay. So. Um, all right. So again, we're we're just gonna we're just gonna keep it fairly simple. One E and a two E and a three. No accents. Almost robotic. Uh, 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 uh. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a very robotic. Now, this may be one of those. Get, and then suddenly you do. You ever had that happen with anything? You're like, oh man, I'm trying to do that. How, how do I do that? How? And then you do it and you're like, how did I do that? <laughs> that happens to me all the time. Yeah, there's a battle like uh, that's been around. Uh, no. Yeah, it's not the banjo. A snare drum? No, that's oh, that yeah, that's a banjo. Oh, that's the banjo. That's the six-string banjo. Yeah, yeah, it's probably an instrument you've never heard of before, but you have heard. I guarantee you've heard this instrument, but you didn't know it existed. And well, if anybody saw my Instagram story from yesterday or two days ago, you would have seen it. So. Uh, the flatback thing is the my oud, my flatback oud. Um, it's electric oud and oud. So I have two ouds, tudes <laughs> for shorthand. Okay, now let's try. We're gonna accent one. All right. So one, two, three, four. that was a really big accent. So basically, this is oversimplification of the pattern, but it's we're kind of alternating down, accenting a down, and then doing three strokes, and then uh, accenting the up, and then the down, and then the up, and then the down, and the up. Um, that's kind of what the pattern is, basically, but if you... If you run the number, 16 is not divisible by 3, and there are 16 sixteenth notes in a bar. So we're going to have to do something different in that last at the end. Um, technically, I guess you could do it at the beginning. You could start with 2. two. You could 
do it anywhere. I never really thought of that. Now, I have moved the accents, and we'll talk about that too. Um, uh, but what we want to do is accent. Okay. So down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up. And that's the, that's the second note we're going to accent. So that's the one E and uh of beat one. The one E and a. Uh. One E and a. Uh. One. So we can kind of practice that, but that might not be the best thing to practice because you really want to keep the arm moving. And the other thing we could practice is just doing those two accents and just, just going continuously. Would be more of a six eight feel. See that one two three one two. Three. But again, if we we can't add up threes to ever equal sixteen, so we're going to have to either do two twos or a four uh, to to get from twelve to sixteen, because we can get to twelve twelve sixteenth notes. So we got to figure out a way to do it. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's a survey rod that's been turned into a guitar. <laughs> All right. So we have... Okay, so one... I'm just going to do, it's, it's hard. So let's try to do six beats. Like that. All right. So I'm just down, up, down, up, down, up. But I'm, I'm ending with an upstroke here. And then the key is just to, just to kind of accent or play a little harder on those, those hits. The one. notation for this somewhere I, it's probably already up at discord um, So, um, ba -dum -bum 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 -bum. Uh, let's see, where would I have put that? Well, uh, yeah, it's a mention. No, all right. Not seen it. I, uh, uh, but there may be something, like I said, in if, if you go way back, because we talked about this before. Um, okay. So back to, sorry, here we go. So we got one. below the, uh, usually it's facing the other way, but the thing below the resonator is a kumbas. Yeah, that's a fretless 12-string banjo. <laughs> it's like the worst of all worlds. 
Well, at least it's a 12 string. You don't have to worry about being in tune. <laughs> and it's not too, it's tuned weird. But I use it. I like it. It's hard to play. Hey, Philippe, what's going on? Good to see you. Welcome. So, yes, this is live, Philippe. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's live. Now you know it is, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of picks. So yeah. Okay. So, um, Off beat four, I do a one or four and a four e and a, so I accent four and the and so both of those downstrokes. So if you were to listen to it, those are the accents. sense of 60. Yeah, so um, can I point or play all accents? Yeah, so if you if you start out just playing so we have one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a so I'm trying not to accent there, okay? So slowly moving. You'll notice my arm never stops moving. Even if I only hit the accent. So check this out. See, I'm hitting, I'm not hitting the strings except for the accents. So it's still, yeah, I'll, yeah, it let, let us, yeah. So I'll keep doing that. Um, I may have to even go slower. Sometimes you get too slow and it almost becomes impossible to hear it. But again, another way you can think of this is uh, if you want to kind of subdivide it, and this, not, this is not a wrong way to think about it, okay? Um, uh, because a lot of times when you're counting accents in 4-4, four, four, you'll do this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. Okay. So what that is, if you add up those numbers, you've got 16 numbers. And that's, that would be a very flamenco way of thinking about it, right? The, um, and um, uh, the, what is it, com, 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 compost? The, the uh, metronome that flamenco players use is a weird 12 count thing. Because a lot of the, the um, flamenco grooves are in groupings of three. either 6-8 or 12-8 of some kind. And so there's, there's a lot of triplet feels in flamenco music. Um, and so, but 
a lot of times if you're counting like seven, eight, you might go one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, would be a way to count seven, eight. Um, four, eight, uh, four, four, you could count one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, that's four, four, but it's just putting the accents on different beats on, on one and the end of two and then on four. And that's kind of what we're doing here. We're, but we're, these are 16th notes, all right? Oh, that's, you know what's funny, Philippe? Um, my friend, uh, Isaias Elpis, who's from Brazil, he plays, I played with him this weekend at church. He's a great bass player, but he's really, really into bluegrass right now. That is so cool. I mean, it's interesting to me. I wonder what, so, interesting. Okay, so somebody from Canada went to, that's really cool, Philippe. Uh, yeah, um, so, um, I have a, um, several bluegrass jam tracks and they, they are they're pretty popular in Brazil it's funny so it's yeah I, I didn't kind of realize that but um, country music got big in Australia too I mean Keith Urban I think had a hand in that but I think I think it was big before that because Keith that's how Keith heard about it so hey Joseph welcome okay so uh, this is for Lena but really for all of you I'm gonna do this groove slowly Lena, let me know if I'm doing it slow enough for you. Um, I mean, I know we can all move our hand really fast, but that doesn't mean we're grooving, okay? So, um, I'm again, what I'm doing is I'm doing uh, the free range groove, which I'm accenting every third strum. So it's going to alternate between a, up, a downstroke accent and an upstroke accent. But again, we have we do that three four times, and then we we're at twelve. Uh, 16th notes and we have four notes to go so we have to figure out a different way to subdivide that so I'm gonna basically do one and two or one and uh, sorry one two one two so I'm gonna accent four and the end of four like that okay all right so here we go So let me play a little bit. I'll jam a little bit on this, okay? One of the best ways to learn something in music is to listen to it. You know, I always say, if you want to sound like Jimi Hendrix, listen to a lot of Jimi Hendrix, but also listen to his influences. Who influenced Jimi Hendrix? It's like, I really want to sound like George Benson, so I listened to Charlie Christian. I listened to Wes Montgomery, who wasn't was more of a contemporary, believe it or not, uh, of, of his, but was definitely before him. Uh, but Benson had a very early career, but also Django Reinhardt, he lists as, an, as a big influence on him. Um, so, uh, yeah, but listening to something, you can kind of absorb it and, and uh, you know, certain feels. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to listen to more flamenco music. It's difficult and, and Middle Eastern music, too. <laughs> so I'm trying to kind of catch up on some of this stuff. All right, here we go. I'm going to just do a jam and E.
you know, I got into 6'8". Dang it, I hate it when I do that. <laughs> it's hard when you're by yourself. Okay, here we go. Okay, so Matthew, my thumb is muting when I'm playing everything but the E chord. Um, so when I was doing this, my thumb's doing nothing there, but when I go down to this, I'm just taking, playing an E power chord, okay? So this is what I call an E5 chord. It's pretty common nomenclature now, but at the time when I came up with it, I'd never heard anyone say it before, but I'm playing 079900, okay? But then I'm playing C sharp minor seven this way. I'm playing, so it's C sharp minor seven. I'm playing nothing there, so I'm muting with my thumb and then I'm going four, six, six, zero, zero. Um, unless I want a chord to be, have an E in the bass or whatever. And then when I went down to the, the B, I just slid that power chord down again. So it's, here's my E, C sharp minor seven, B sus. A2. And yeah, I'm definitely muting. If I want to, I could hit, get, grab that F sharp or I could get. harmonic movement there uh, so there I'm, I'm playing open uh, nothing on the bottom string so muting that and then I'm open A seventh fret sixth fret open B open E and then I'm moving, moving that back and forth and it gives me a very A Lydian kind of sound which A Lydian is relative to E major which is the key we're in so it makes sense but again that's the that's the tug at the heartstrings chord right in a movie, if that happens, you know, it's like, oh. No. Hey, Quail, good to see you, man. So that's just a really, you know, you're just you're just trying to manipulate people, you know. That's the Back to the Future harmony. And it's like, oh my gosh, I hear that. And I just was like, you know, immediately. And it's just a tri two, tri uh, two uh, major triads, a tritone apart. E major and B flat major. I'm working on a video. I'm almost done editing it, although it's, 
the bummer about the graphics, I'm doing screen grabs of the, the my notation, and of course the, the graphics aren't the same size, and they kind of, so it's not gonna be perfect, and it's gonna be a little bit more for the intermediate guitar player, less for the beginner, but it's, I'm talking about two, five, one progressions, a trick to, a way to, to play over, to kind of get started on having ideas for playing over two, five, one. So anyway, that's what the video is about. I'm probably going to do a follow-up video where I do just a bunch of them at tempo and then slowly. Um, and uh, anyway, um, that's that's may drop. I'll probably finish it today, but I'll and it's I'm not going to make any money on that stupid video. <laughs> I'm spending so much time on it. I'm like these these more advanced videos. You know, I'll get like a thousand views, two thousand views, and it's like yeah, there's a dollar, two dollars, whatever. So, um, um, but I, um, I like doing them and who knows, it may open up, uh, some eyes for some people on some, some playing and, you know, and you never know, it could go slightly viral, but it's just not the kind of video that's going to do that. I have to title it though. That's the hard part. Um, and I will probably post it on, I'll send a, a private link to Discord, uh, won't make it public, I'll send, I'll put the, the link to it on Discord before Thursday. It may happen today or tomorrow, and then you guys can, can proof it for me, but don't feel like you have to. Um, uh, the, it's, it's like, it's over 20 minutes, I think. I'm, I think I'm at 21 minutes or something. The, the, the raw footage was 25 minutes at least, so. Um. Yeah, it's totally right, Sam, isn't it? Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Especially over in eBay. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I know, I know. I've, I've been trying to catch lightning in a bottle. You know, I need to do some more open tuning videos because those, for me, are like, in my top 10 videos, I think six of them are open tuning videos. Um, I don't know. I should do another interview. I've got lots of people I've talked to about doing interviews with. Um, uh, uh, James Santiago from um, Universal Audio, who also, he invented my favorite pedal, my always on pedal, which is not in the studio, but live is a sparkle drive. Um, he invented a lot of pedals, including the Wazoo, which I use. I don't have it out right now. Oh no, I do. It's right there. Uh, which is a volume. It's a, it's a, um, uh, wah, wah pedal. Uh, he also did the Giggity. That's his. Um, and then now he's at, he's doing the, uh, Oxbox at, he, he created that. Uh, he's just a super cool guy. Um, has some amazing vintage instruments. So I'll probably go to his place to do it if I end up doing it. Also, Chris Trainer. I'd like to interview Chris Trainer, who's the guitar player for Bush. Uh, he and I have become friends over the years, and then also uh, maybe George Daring, who's the number one session guy in town. I did Joe DeBlasi, who he was at one point the top guy in town too. So yeah, it's it's really. Now on that beat four, you could do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one. You could hit a big four and not have to accent two eighth notes in a row. Uh, the other thing is you could accent all of them. Uh, that would sound something like this, like. You know, kind of just really strong on all, all, eight, all four beats of beat four. Um, but if you just did beat four, it would sound like this. Um, if you did the, the two eighth notes sound like this. And I, I, I can, you can alternate between, there's no rule or anything like that. You can kind of go back and forth between those. You can do whatever you want what, or whatever just happens uh, too, as you're kind of, it gets, it can get a little chaotic if you're going really fast. <laughs> thing 
thing too you could do is at least on the down strokes you could hit the bottom few strings only and kind of create this bass chord bass chord kind of thing that's a little harder to do and i'm not trying to make this harder i'm trying to make it uh um see yeah Peroni's here hi Peroni um, so the um, that's just triplets uh, and I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that on, on on a steel string guitar. Although at least these elixirs are a little softer, so they're not digging into my nails as much. But yeah, that's more for nylon instruments. Um, and um, this that groove can be done. It sounds great on pretty much any instrument. Uh, let's see. I'll tell you, I'm, in a, I'm hunting for a new mandolin. This is a super duper cheap mandolin. I need a better one. Um, maybe I'll go get one today. Um, So this is a G note, G string here. It's when you play that, it goes sharp. This, it, like that, could be perfectly in tune, but this note usually is sharp. So I can get that D chord kind of in tune, but then. I go back to the G chord and it's not in tune. So I'm not, I didn't tune this, so it's not perfect anyway to begin with. But, um, but yeah, that groove can work on a lot of instruments. Um, and I know you're waiting to find out what this is. All right. You're gonna have to wait. Let me put an ad before that. <laughs> Click ad. Um, yeah, and so if I were to do, um, that groove on electric, I could totally do. Oh. I could totally do kind of a strumming thing on electric with open strings or whatever. I could totally do. I mean, Pete Townsend did. Right? Sus to G, and F sharp sus to F. It's it's really cool. That's one of the best guitar intros I think of all time. It reminds me like kind of that was a kind of a thing. There's a what's the Chicago, you know, really cool um, or like.
tra uh, long train of long train of running or whatever from Doobie Brothers. Um, but what I would probably do, okay, get ready to take another sip. We have a drinking game. Take a sip because I'm going to switch to the telly. Oh, we got to pull up a sound here. Hold on. I was mixing a, a song for with a friend. Let's see. I need a. I need um. So I'm just gonna do like a clean sound. Excuse me. Um. Get rid of this compressor. Oh, you know what? I need to reset this. There we go. Get rid of the reverb. Turn everything down and in tune. So um, here's how a way to play that, and it's really a cornerstone of how I play rhythm electric in R&B and funk. Um, and I guess in disco too, if I were to ever play disco again. Well, I've done disco stuff recently. Um, so I'm gonna play an A minor seven chord. All right, so I'm barring the fifth fret all six strings basically a minor seven is five seven five 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 okay it's like a phone number a tv show phone number almost um five 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 okay and what i'm doing is i'm i'm just laying my fingers on the strings and i might you might even pick a different chord like a sharp or b flat because it, you're less likely to get overtones but, but not too bad right now um, but basically you can do this one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and so I'm doing the exact same but instead of accenting with the right hand I'm going to create the accent with the left hand by squeezing the chord so this is that same groove but done in a funk matter okay a, a funk way <laughs> Okay, so, so what I'm doing is I'm squeezing on every third. And then the beat four, I'm doing every other. Four and one. Four and one. Four and one. like an E nut. Now, Peroni, if it's too loud, it just distorts on your end. So. Could be the headstock. Yeah. Why do you think I have felt in all my guitar so many of my guitars? Yeah, because I don't think you're hearing the speakers as much as you're hearing. In fact, if I turn off, what happens if I turn off this? But again, in slow motion, I'm squeezing when I want the accent. accenting on one, one E and a uh of one, on the and of two, and then the E of three, and then four and the and of four. Okay? Don't, don't worry, there won't be a quiz on this. Check this out. 
I'm going to move the accent over at one sixteenth note. So now I'm going to, instead of accenting on one and the uh, the uh of one, I'm going to accent on the e of one and on two, and then then the uh of two and the and of three. So it sounds like this. Uh, so it'd be a. Uh, uh, So before it was, so I might do that to just kind of mix it up in a gig. You know, if I'm playing like, a, you know, if I had like a, uh, uh, what tempo is this? It's not awful tempo. So say I had a drummer playing. Uh, let's go with kind of R&B vibe, and let's see what happens here. I need a busy feel. pretty fast. So that's starting on the downbeat. Three, four, one. But if I moved it over one sixteenth though, it sound like this. One, two, three. And I can move it over another sixteenth though, so I'm starting on the end of one. And uh, the uh of one. One, two, three. Ah, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, it's crazy. You can do it. Now, another thing I might do is I might hit double hit. So if I go back to my original, I could do double hits, double squeeze, so I'm squeezing twice as long instead of for 1 16th I'm going to squeeze for 2 16 It sounds like this. See, it's fast. And that's the same, ultimately the same feel as that free range groove. Where's the guitar? Here's the guitar. So check this out. I'm going to play the free range groove, but I'm going to the accent. try that so if, if you really have this down if you can really play it like uh you know a hundred times a hundred measures in a row without getting all jumbled <laughs> it would not easy <laughs> then you can start to mess around with starting it's almost one of those things where you almost have to hear it and then you just imitate it um if i move it to the eighth note of one it would sound like this one two. So that's that's uh, gives you some variations on it. So you can be going and struggling. You know, 
Um, that and one thing you can do too, which is kind of cool, is like D. You can go to drop D. gives you a really big sound and it's it's again it's kind of that free range wild west kind of vibe um they may have actually used a drop d on that commercial because the song was in d i, I remember it Oh, am I doing a coffee fast? Mm. I am doing a fast. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, so stop. Don't talk about food. <laughs> but co coffee's not part of the fast. I've lost uh, four or five pounds. I don't know. Uh, I didn't fast this week weekend. Uh, so today is going to be hard because I'm going to get to... I think I can eat at... I think the last time I ate last night was nine. So that means I can eat as early as three today, but I'll probably push it to four or five just because of the weekend. We'll see. If I'm dying at three o'clock, I may have to eat something. But something usually is like an apple or a cheese stick or something like that. So I, I, I don't like go crazy and go to McDonald's or anything like that. Get a McRib. Oh, so good. Why do I like McRibs? I don't know. I'm sure. I don't even know what it's made out of. Like... It's not chicken. Think smaller, more legs, right? <laughs> That's from uh, Simpsons. Yeah, exactly. Um, Beth says her food's never her food's never tasted better to me because I'm so hungry by dinner time. Mm 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 mm. Yeah, one chord, get the dance floor going. It's true. All right. So, let's see. Okay, so you want to see that instrument, huh? I am going to do a video on it, I think. We'll see. I talked to the manufacturer. He's He, he doesn't make it, really want to make it a lot of these. like so. I, and I don't know if I did a video if it would result in orders or not. Um, but I don't think there's a lot of videos on this instrument up on, on the... Um, up on YouTube. Oops. Um. Let's see. Yeah, there's one. Two, yeah. Oh, a pr prototype here. Yeah. Uh. There's a few of them up here. Mostly the same person, though. All right. Oh, we're, we're, we're climbing here, so I'm building suspense. All right, so I'm going to send you to an ad. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Not you. You're, I don't think live you're going to get an ad. Uh, but for those of you who want to see what this instrument is back there, uh, stick around after the ad. All right. So I think I just inserted an ad. All right. Anybody know what this is? It actually, it actually is a um, kind of a an electrification of an acoustic instrument. You see, it's got 
the volume and tone output. And we're going to put this in here. Again, I don't think you're going to hear it. Uh, I don't. Hold on a second. I got to get something. Hold on. Actually, he did great workmanship on this. He, he did the, so the metal, the uh, aluminum is, um, was kind of stock piece that was pretty raw and he sanded it down really good. And he put all the holes in and used the, the plate here to put the electronics on. Um, he's got an adjustable leg, just like a cello or would have, which is really nice. Uh, normally you would not play this sitting down. You play it standing up. And normally you play, you can play it with a, with a um, drumstick, but you don't have to. But basically, this is called a whamola, whamola. And it's kind of like a wash tub bass. It's a one string bass, but I can, I can play fretlessly. Um, which, you know, I'm really into fretless instruments. And you can't probably hear that very well. Um, you're going to hear mostly the... But the idea is to find the pitch you want. Let me, uh, let me record a little bit of this, and then playing it back, we might be able to hear it. And I may put some... Turn up the gate, and then I'm gonna add a distortion box. Uh, let's see. No. Nope. Let's put let's put a rat on here. Oh, not a rat. Let's do a fuzz. Yeah, let's do a fuzz. Okay, I'm gonna record a little bit. Oh wait, drumstick. hearing because really you're just hearing it live you're just hearing the me hit it this time. <laughs> so yeah so it's what Les Claypool used to write the the South Park theme on the compressor I don't know it's hard to play bass lines though on one string but So it's definitely, I will find use for it, because keep in mind, I play a lot, I do a lot of stuff on video games, so we're always looking for weird sounds. Um, and it works with a bow, which is cool, too. So, and you can see the mechanism there. It ba see the bass tuner right there? Okay. You see that? 
totally handmade though. He totally made all this wood, but the and you can see the wood finish. It's a gorgeous. It's very shiny. Did a great job. It's really clean. Made in Indiana, like me. <laughs> I was made in Indiana too. So I think that, I don't know if that's ultimately where I'm going to keep it, but <clears throat> it's a lot like the Scobachon. This is an Indian instrument and it's kind of like a giant one of those. And you can get different sizes of those too. Um, all right. Where are you all? There you are. Okay. All right, so, <laughs> yeah, it's very grungy. Sorry, let's see, we're in LA. Oh, hey, Max, what's going on? Yeah, so it's called a whamola. A Hoosier whamola. <laughs> Just when you thought you'd seen it all. Exactly. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a single string bass, basically. But it's like it's basically an electric um, tub bass, right? Remember the tub basses? And you, would, you wouldn't fret it. You would change the pitch by moving. In fact, it was just a... Um, a a tin giant tin washing tub with a hole in the bottom and a string and a um, like a um, a coat uh, not a, like you know just like a, a broom handle and the broom handle wouldn't even be mounted you would just set it down on the edge of the thing and just pull it back and that would pitch up and pitch down and you would just find find that tone that you needed it didn't have to be perfect <laughs> so. Yeah, I have the best noisemakers. Um, yeah, so that's that's the uh, and I got the the Gibsons out because of the um, I did I used it for my video uh, for the two five one video that I'm going to finish today. So um, so we were talking about the the. the free range groove. And um, let me just do it a little bit more and um, I'll slow it down and you can play along with me. Uh, get your guitar tuned to in tune. Close enough. And uh, we're gonna go between E and E sus. That way you can hear where, where the downbeat is, first bar. bad idea to, to uh, go ahead and tap your foot that's always a good idea when you want to try to keep track of where one is um, and I've actually had back in the day when I was teaching private lessons I would have to sometimes kids would like over that groove they might go bump 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 with their foot and that's not what you want you want one two three four <laughs> Get your, your 
part of your body keeping track of where the downbeats are and then the rest the, the rest of your body playing against it. Um, it's kind of like patting your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time. It's drummers do this all day long. I mean, keep in mind they've got two arms and two two feet on everything. <laughs> so they're all, they could all be doing different things. Um, but that having that anchor of the beat uh, with your foot is always a good thing. Um, now, in the studio, I have to be careful because if I'm being mic'd and everything, I can't be stomping my foot. But I might, you know, bounce it silently on my toe like this so you can't hear it. Um, almost wish I had something to stomp on here so that you could hear it, like taps on my tap shoes on a wood floor. Click, 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 you know, so you could hear the downbeat. But anyway, that's... Uh, um, and so the groove... Oh, this is that groove... Oh, this guitar, this is, I believe, uh, this, this is an F-22. I think it's a cedar top. The fretboard's probably ebony. Um, or rosewood. Uh, let me look it up and see, because I don't know, I, I don't know if Loudon still makes them. <clears throat> you can find them on Reverb. Um, F-22 is not impossible to find, but nah. All right. Okay. Um, red cedar and mahogany. Yeah, so mahogany back and sides, I guess. About 4K, 4 to 5,000. Um, yeah, mahogany back and sides, five piece mahogany neck, mahogany neck with some from um, ebony fingerboard, rosewood bridge. That's probably what mine is, yeah. And it's a split saddle, which is weird, but it makes the intonation, I think, is pretty good on it. Um, I have a, uh, what's the name of that company? Dang it. Um, something, something mountain pickup. The only company that makes a pickup for this split saddle. Um, and you can see I've kind of scratched up. There's no pick guard on it. It didn't come with one. It had a, uh, like a fake, uh, like a stick on plastic, not, uh, like just, a, a, a friction, you know, like peel off kind of plastic covering, but I, I didn't like it. It, it looked bad. So I just took it off. It's fine. I don't mind. Yep. Um, I don't mind scraping up guitars. I mean, I'm not, I don't resell things. I, I just, I keep them to use. Um, yeah, so, and then mine's not a cutaway. So, and mine's like from 96. So all the ones I'm seeing here are cutaways. They're all F22C. C stands for cutaway. Um, yeah, so ever, you know, uh, here's, Oh, this one has electronics. They want 6,500, brand new for this one. Um, this one looks like a left, it's left-handed. So that's, yeah, kind of weird. And you can see it's got the, well, uh, you can't, but I can. Uh, it's got the little pick guard on it. But I, again, I think that just comes right off if you want. Um, yeah, it's, I, you know, I like it. I use it live, mostly. Um, so no, the, 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 the pickup was some mountain Greek, Greek mountain. I can't remember now. Um, but there's not many people that make, not many makers that make saddles or, um, pickups for split saddles and you can't really cut it in half. You know, you can't cut one into, into thirds or anything like that. So I'm not, it's, it's very specific. Um, and, now this one's weird. It looks like the E string is longer than the other strings. Is that just an optical illusion? Oh yeah, it is. Okay. So yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a beautiful instrument. Um, uh, in fact, I just turned on my humidifier because a, a guitar like that's going to want a lot of humidity, and I haven't had it out in a while, and the top is starting to move a little bit. So it's you know at some point that's probably going to 
bow so much it's not going to be usable maybe in another 40 years after I'm gone so um, but yeah what did we get to here we got 36 at one point a couple times we got 36 that's awesome anybody new here we got some new people too that was awesome hopefully they come back hopefully they didn't bore anybody um, and then as far as another groove next week I, I may come up with another one I don't know if you guys are digging this or not um, hopefully you're, you're able to kind of get it um, and um, you'll, you'll, you're able to um, uh, maybe use it at some point I mean that's why everything I try to teach you is something that you can use I hope or why teach it um, and like I said I got another video that I'm gonna try to finish today maybe upload today or tomorrow and then post a link in discord so you all can um, uh, you guys can kind of proof it for me if you want plus that's the beauty of being a member of the discord you get free you get to see it first without any ads um, and that may be a mistake on my part but that's okay that's not that many like I said I don't expect to make much on this one um, and I'm probably gonna make a follow-up video where I, I show you a lot of these patterns um, but it's a it's a little formula a little trick you know everybody's always wanting these magic bullets and these tricks and and uh, I may call it the 251 magic bullet or something <laughs> but uh, but it's a uh, oh oh uh, Phil, Phil asked for bluegrass drum lesson yeah that would be probably um, if you go to my I, I can find them for you um, my YouTube channel if I if you enter um, let's see content what do I call it uh, standard folk groove so um, you know what how many views does that have play tips for studio uh, okay let me try this again All right, and then strumming. So here's one where I, I teach the standard folk groove. This is a little older. Um, and so the standard folk groove is the one that bluegrass players use a lot. Um, sorry, let me turn this off. Speaking of reverb. Yeah, weird. This one didn't get many views. Um, well, here we go. So I did. Yeah. I, did I? What did I call it? Oh, that's weird. Anyway, that one should get you started. Um, on the standard folk groove. So the standard folk groove is an eighth note groove. Uh, but keep in mind, bluegrass tempos can get up there in the 200, you know, the beep, almost in the bebop range, tempo-wise. But like you take a G chord. That's the standard folk groove. So what I'm doing is down, down, up, up, down, up. But notice that my arm never stops moving. On the same kind of thing, we can just play nothing but eighth notes to kind of get the arm moving. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E. Yeah, and Sam, this is a very brassy sounding instrument. Um, I feel like this is really good for, whoops, um, for like finger style. Uh, right now I don't have a thumbnail much to speak of, but um, it's good for Celtic stuff, being Irish. It's great. It sounds great in drop D tuning, I mean, uh, Dad Gad. In fact, I think in some of my Dad Gad videos, I use this guitar. Uh, so, um, but yeah, so the standard folk groove is down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up. And I've got that video on it. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. Uh, and it fast, it's like.
that's the same group. Maybe just hitting but bass notes on a downbeat. And by bass notes, I mean you don't have to be very precise and hit one string. You can kind of hit the lower strings. You don't need to go. Well, that's a good, a good skill to have, all right? Being able to, to quickly grab one note, one string, and then strum them all. That's not easy. That's a good skill to have, to be able to do that. Um, easy to do that with a, just when the bottom string is a sixth string. Harder when it's the fourth string. So, um, yeah, and then um, another thing you could do is if you want, you could check out Wiegand picks. Um, they make a really nice bluegrass pick. So I think if you just Google it, he's in France. So if you're, it may take you a minute to get it, but th these uh, Wiegand picks are great um, for playing bluegrass. They're going to be very... Um, they're very stiff, so if you're used to playing with a thin pick, it might take a, a minute to get used to it. And then also, we did a whole long series on bluegrass, bluegrass soloing. I wrote, we wrote songs. Remember that? And and Bruce, I think, sent you kind of some some starting points um, on the live stuff. It's like, man, did we did we do? Um, a ton of those let's see so I'm just I'm just filtering my live yeah so how many does it say does it, it didn't give me a number here I mean it went we went for a long time intro to bluegrass six but uh 156 yeah one seven I mean what literally if you start at lesson number 155 I think Bruce sent you a link to that um, Get a shareable link. Here it is right here. You could start there and then just go to the next video and to the next video. Not, not that there's a link in the video. You might have to dig around a little bit to find these. But if you sort my, uh, if you go to my channel and sort the, um, if you sort the videos by name, if you enter the word bluegrass in there, that should help you. These are all says intro to bluegrass. And it was really, we just kind of came up with it as a group because, you know, I said, you know, what, what should I teach next? And then they were like, well, what do you want to work on? I went, you know what? I'd like to work on my bluegrass chops because I'm not a bluegrass player. Don't don't think that I'm some great. I'm not even a beginner in some ways. I mean, I have good guitar skills that are transferable to lots of different styles. But if I got called for a bluegrass record, I'd probably give them somebody else's number. But if I'm playing bluegrass in a movie or a TV show or in a video game, which I've done all those, um, that's not a problem because it's not... Bluegrass, you know, when you buy a record, you listen to it over and over again. And so if there's somebody that's not quite up to speed with everybody else, you'll start to notice it. But in a movie or a TV show, no, because you're really, in those scenarios, you only have to fool, you know, you're fooling 99% of the people. There's only 1% of your audience that's like legit bluegrass player that goes, uh, yeah, that guitar player is not very good. <laughs> or at least not good at bluegrass. So that's kind of, you know... Uh, it's funny because my my friend Joe, his email address is basically like hack guitar player or something. And I'm like, you're not a hack. He's a great guitar player. But you do kind of feel like when you compare, because I'm, I play so many different instruments and so many different styles. The reason is, is that I just want to be able to be hired to do all these different things. But none of them are where it's critical um, to be like the top in the game. In fact, the top flamenco player would make a lousy session guitar player because you know they, they typically can't play in time 
and they can't play quiet and they can't, you know, there's a lot of things that they can't do. Um, even though they can do one thing super duper well, better than anybody else. Um, so generally session musicians are not the best at any one thing. They're just really good. It's like master, you know, what is it? Master of none, you know, uh, what is it? <laughs> I can't remember the saying all of a sudden. All right. Yep. And that's when. So uh, thank you, Bruce. That's when I'm live. Generally Monday. I, you know, and I, the, the Discord, I feel like the poll, everybody still happy. Now, the problem with the Discord poll is that almost everybody that joined the Discord joined via the Monday morning live stream, right? So if we were to, uh, where's the poll? Is it? It's been a while since you did the poll. What tab did you do the poll on? Oh, oh, Holly promoted the live thing. Thank you. When was? Oh, here we go. All right, yeah, so it looks like Monday's still the most popular, 16 to 7. So I didn't vote on it because I, yeah, it's irrelevant. And, you know, Monday's probably easier. Saturday, you know, the weekends can be kind of crazy. So it's nice not having to have to do something Saturday morning first thing. So it's probably better for me anyway. It's just sometimes, like I said, the weekends can be really crazy. I get, I get to Monday morning, I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. Uh, this weekend was not bad, but the previous weekend, man, was crazy. Hey, Chronic, what's going on? Yeah, Jack of all trades. Thank you, Chronic. <laughs> Chronic's been lurking all this time. Jumps in because of my brain fart. <laughs> yeah, Doc is Doc Watson is freaking amazing. I mean, yeah, again, uh, Philippe sounds like you're immersing yourself in it, and that's one of the keys, and I'm guilty of not doing that. Um, uh, so I'm telling you, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Um, I need to listen to more music. Part of the problem just for me in general is that I do so much music all day long. Um, and people are always saying, oh man, your house must be full of music all the time. And I'm like, oh, well, technically, yeah, when I'm working and when I'm writing, you know, like I've got this song that I did. Um, and I don't know if this song is going to get released. I'll let you know if it does. Uh, I'm not sure how she do it. This is uh, for a friend. Um, she's um, a very good singer. And um, nothing worth fighting for comes easily. And I'm not trying to give you a piece of me. Wanna give you everything I got. So that's a new an artist that I'm I'm I work with all the time. We've written a lot of songs together. We've got this we've got a song, a couple movies and things like that. Um, and she's in in Austin. And uh, this is actually a cover, but it's so different than the original. I don't think that's going to trigger. If it does trigger the um, uh, the the copyright bots at YouTube, then um, we'll uh, <laughs> I'll mute that. Um, uh, yeah, no, it's not been mastered yet. No, in fact, I, I even have the mastering software off right now because it, it slows everything down. Um, but yeah, no, the vocals. I, but I, but the vocals, I've got everything on it that I use. Um, and I, yeah, it's got the verb. Uh, I'm using Valhalla delay and Valhalla plate reverb. So I'm using two reverbs, or uh, one delay and one reverb by Valhalla, which I really like. Normally, I use the the. The stereo delay from Logic, but I was trying this Valhalla one, and I'm like, oh, shoot, I love this. Um, and it's got a nice, you know, kind of delay to it, um, kind of a, uh, uh, 
kind of a phasey delay or something. It's just like really nice. So um, thanks, Peroni. The yeah, so the artist is Kelly Jekyll, um, and you can check out some of her music, some of our music together. Um, and she um, she's an actress too, so she's doing like Lifetime movies and things like that. And then um, she's uh, um, uh, yeah, we've got we've got a, a big record, you know, like a long, you know, like. A, 35 minute record coming out she's going to do a, a long form video for it for the entire record and so she's raising funds for that right now so that she can do it it's going to be like a 35 minute video um and she's scripting it and everything so it's going to be pretty cool when she's all done with it um but yeah so that when that comes out who knows what will happen with that we're you know i'm kind of excited for that to come out because uh it's it's very different than everything we've ever done before so Yeah, Valhalla Reverb is definitely cool. For fifty dollars, I've got every one of their plugins, so I think that I think they have six things released that you can buy. Then they have some free stuff too. Um, Valhalla DSP. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, oh, and they're telling us that we're compatible. Okay. Uh, Valhalla Delay, Valhalla Vintage Verb, Valhalla Room, Valhalla Plate, Valhalla Shimmer, Uber Mod. And then they have Space Modulator, Frequency Echo are free. And so Supermassive is free. Wow, I didn't realize Supermassive was free. That's pretty crazy because Supermassive is uh, actually a pretty cool plugin. So yeah, I would definitely get all, but I, yeah, for 300 bucks, get all those really nice reverbs. It's, it's uh, I see them. I know that like some of the top mixers in pop music use them. So, um, it's definitely um, amazing because you can spend a lot on some of these plugins. I mean, they can get up into the $1,500 range. I, I have uh, all the, I usually always get contact complete. So I have all of their plugins and their, their channel plugins, the clean stuff, you know, the, like the reverbs and delays and stuff. I don't really use them very often. Sometimes I do. I've also got the entire uh, uh, sound toys library. I bought all of that. So I have all of those plugins. And those are great for guitars. I, I don't use those on voices so much, uh, or even on acoustic guitars. I mostly use those as plugins for electric. Uh, the delay, uh, the, the Echo Boy is kind of cool. Uh, actually, the plate reverb is kind of cool. I've used it on a couple things. So I'm just still learning it. Yeah, frequency shifter. Yeah, I've used that on something. It's weird, uh, but that's weird is sometimes exactly what the doctor ordered. So <laughs> definitely, if you're looking for a... Um, a place to go get, you know, some free stuff uh, for your for your DAW, uh, DAW. You can go there and check that out. Um, I should post this on my Facebook page too. Mm, where's that? Where am I? Oh, it's on. That's why I'm on Chrome. So, um, yeah. All right. Sorry, I was late today. I just was organizing and doing different things and I was working on this track for Kelly and getting her a copy I haven't heard back from her have I somebody's texted me oh does anybody know if and this is not for me this is for someone else I just got asked a question does does a, a fidelity account allow you to trade in um uh, op uh, uh, not options. Um, I know I can do options. Um, I've done options before, but not on Fidelity. I don't have Fidelity, but um, uh, commodities. If someone wanted to trade commodities, could you do it in Fidelity? I say I'm not a huge fan of commodities. Um, I just, I always feel like, yes. <laughs> well, uh, Sam, I'll tell you a story about that too. And guess who played her his granddaughter in the movie Forty Two? That was Kelly, and that she got the gig, and they didn't know she was actually his great great granddaughter. So, um, or great, yeah. So, yeah, she was playing his granddaughter in the movie. And they didn't know that she was really his great-granddaughter, great, 
granddaughter. I was in Denver with her uh, before COVID. I guess it was 2019, and we actually drove by the stadium, and I took some pictures of her with a statue there that uh, of him because he, there's a there's a statue of him outside the um, Rockies Stadium or the Rockies Park. So. Um, yeah, it was pretty funny. I, it was like they freaked out when they found out she was actually his granddaughter or great granddaughter. Yeah. So. Oh, interesting. Okay. Thanks, Peroni. Um, oh, you were reaching for <laughs> That's funny, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce is often like, hey, Tom, are you up? Are you doing a live stream today? And it's just like, yeah, I, I, it's like, I could text you, Bruce, that I'm going to be late, that I'm running late or whatever, but then that makes me even later. So I feel like it's always better just to go ahead and, and, and get on sooner, as soon as I can. I think I was on at 9.13 or something like that. So normally I'm on, you know, within the first five minutes after the hour. Um, I think last week I was actually right on the hour or something. I, I need to do that. I need to figure out how to do that countdown thing. Studio mode settings. X, let's see. Pain. Um, I could create, so I could create a window that would be a, like a countdown window or something or not a countdown necessarily, but just like, I'll be right back kind of window. Uh, or stay tuned or whatever so that that pops up and people can kind of log in and that's not a bad idea because the reason you do that is to make sure there's kind of a quorum before you start because oftentimes I'll start right off the bat and I won't start teaching right away on the subject matter but I will be talking and things and people are like what did I miss and so that's that's kind of a way to do that I should I should do that but Oh, interesting. I'm raining on you. Okay, well, you know, Paul, we need to talk then. Um, pork bellies is your, well, you're in Chicago. So, I, you know, here's, Paul, here's my thing on, I, I have very, very little experience with commodities. The only thing I ever did was I, I actually invested in a company called Petro Lewis, which was an oil um, exploration company. And when I was 20 years old, I put like $2,500 in it, which was a lot of money when you're 20 years old. And I lost most of it. I got 800 out of my investment uh, when I finally sold it. Um, and because oil prices tanked. And I always say this, and you may have heard me say this before, Paul, but you, you know, driving around, like you've been driving around Michigan. Like we, I remember going up to, to our, you know, our cab, cabin in Michigan every summer. And we'd be driving by these farms and they'd have these oil pumps pumping oil out of the ground, right? But then when gas price, oil price got down to like $10 a barrel, they would just be this. But then when it got up to 35, they'd be pumping it out. And that told me that like, anytime something goes up in price, we tend to find more of it. Like for example, when gold really spiked there 20 years ago or whatever, especially right around the 2009 thing, there were all these stores that popped up like sell your gold. Like just, just stores in LA where you could just sell your gold. And I'm like, Okay, so then all of a sudden we're going to find a lot more gold and gold prices are going to go down. Um, yeah, the scary thing, and, and yeah, the reason for the commodity exchange is really to, to give farmers, right, a, a consistent price for their crop. Like they can know what they're going to get for their product. And I think that's a really good idea because it's really, farming is one of those things where it's very expensive. And um, if, um, if you don't know you can make your money back, it's really hard to get the loans to do it in the first place, let alone spend money out of pocket to do it. So if you can have guaranteed price for your corn in the fall, then, you know, you got it. So, um, but yeah, so whenever demand goes up, the supply tends to go up, so, you know, but I also do, I, I do, I, I have a couple, I mean, I do have oil stock uh, and those have been doing really well last couple of years because of uh, rising uh, crude prices because oil companies have so many fields that they own or manage and get a percentage of. So anytime the crude price goes up, the stocks tend to follow, which is why I bought those stocks in the first place was I wanted to hedge my life against inflation. And uh, so generally it's worked exactly how it was supposed to work. Um, uh, but yeah, I should probably talk to you. <laughs> I don't mean to slam 
commodities. It's just, I, I, I'm scared. And then the other thing is, gosh, there was a minute when 2020, when the COVID happened in March of 2020, and you could get a barrel of oil for like, they would pay you $2 to take it or something, right? And there was like tankers that were looking to deliver oil and they couldn't get rid of it. And so, because there was this fear that the whole world was going to shut down, which a lot of it did. And so, um, but eventually that, that didn't last, but a couple days, maybe, I don't know. I don't, I'm sure you were like watching all that happen in real time. Um, and, um, but I'm always afraid that, oh, you know, oh, I could buy, oh, I could buy pork bellies. And then you forget that you have them. And all of a sudden the truck pulls up. So where do you want these pork bellies? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shoot, I forgot to sell that contract. <laughs> That's my concern. Has that ever happened? I've actually heard of that happening where people forget they have a contract and the truck pulls up or something. That could be completely made up folklore. I didn't see it on Reddit. I just heard it somewhere. I forget. But it was <laughs> on the subject. So, I don't know, Paul, Paul's like not jumping in here because he don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> um, but, oh, yep. Yeah, yeah, and that's, so Jack was, uh, my son was asking me if I can trade uh, commodities, and I think that's how mostly an institutional investor, you can get, you can get commodity accounts. Um, one of the, one of the stocks I own is, um, owns a lot of cobalt mines. And I did that because of all the electric car thing. So I feel like, okay, well, and that stock's done quite well as well because cobalt prices have gone up. Um, and it, but it's, it's not a trader. It's a, it's a miner. So it's a miner of cobalt. Um, yeah. So, and I'm not sure even where they mine it, to be honest. I just bought the stock. So, yeah, so that's that's the latest. I, I'm sure everybody's walk going away now because they're like, I didn't come here for commodities advice. <laughs> oh, and thank you. Uh, shoot, I forgot who gave me the coin, but thanks so much. The Canadian uh, in Canada. Where was that? It's way up here. Was it Matthew? I think it was Matthew. Yeah, it was Matthew. Uh, I'm trying to. Where? Oh, there it is. Okay. So, um, so next week, um, I will, you know, I can work, we could, we could work that standard folk groove. I, I, I can't remember what we did two weeks ago. I, I did last week. I did the hip hop groove, which is a really hard one to get down. That's, that's a toughie. And I, I, I hope, um, uh, <laughs> we are discussing, um, thank you, Bruce. It was Matthew. Yeah. And, um, yeah, no, I've been, I've been in, the, in the stock market since I was a kid. It's one of my little things that I got. My stepdad really kind of got me into understanding. And, uh, you know, it was part of how we bought this house. I mean, I had to pay cap gains on everything, but I sold our Walmart, our Intel, and our McDonald's stock and Pfizer. <laughs> I got all the enemies of the state stocks, you know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, when I buy stocks, I'm not trying to be socially conscious. I'm trying to... I'm trying to protect my money. So all three, all four of those stocks did really well over the period. I had them for quite a while. Um, and I was adding to them all the time, but, um, cause I was doing dividend re reinvestment plans. So it, your dividends automatically buy more stock. So when stocks prices go down on certain stocks, you know, like Walmart or McDonald's may go down here and there. Um, but you know, they're not going to go away. Those are two companies that you know are going to be around. They'll never be worth zero. I have invested in companies that have gone to zero. Thornburg Mortgage I bought, which was a high-end mortgage company I bought in 2007. <laughs> so it was like that was, and I, you know, we lost like three thousand dollars on that. It was, it's, it stunk. I hate. I was so mad, and it was in Beth's IRA, so it was like, oh man, you know. But um, the uh, the, but something like. You know, you have a Walmart or a McDonald's, and if the, if you're reinvesting dividends, it's dollar cost averaging, which means when the price goes down to $100, <clears throat> and if you got your dividends 100 bucks, that means you're buying a share every three months. And it, you know, but if it goes up to 200, great. Now that your $100 investment's two, worth $200, 
Um, but now you're only getting a half a share if you're getting $100. A so you're not getting as many shares. So when the price goes down and if you're reinvesting, it's a bummer, but at least you're getting a better deal for now. And then when the price goes back up, now what, whatever you paid for those. So that's called dollar cost averaging. And that's not a bad thing. Um, oh, was that what I did too? I don't, I don't remember. Because cause I wrote, ask me, I think it was an AMA, right? Isn't that what I called it? See, I didn't actually give it a name, did I? Or, well, let me look. Bruce is going to beat me to it. Oh, to, yeah. Okay, no, Bruce did beat me to it. <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. Yeah, so I got to it eventually. Maybe I need to change the name because I think I did get to a lesson in there somewhere. But, um, yeah, it's the strumming things, strumming, grew, strumming things are really popular. Um, you know, another thing is um, we I could do a, a lesson. It's it's kind of one of those where I have to sit down and go, okay, what are some examples of that? But rhythm, like acoustic rhythm playing, like what 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 do people mean when they say that? But a lot of times, that you know, like a, a rhythm fills, okay. So like a fill, a lick of there you go. Ah, I'm changing pick, so all right, that's a lick. But a fill would be more. You know, that would be more of like a rhythm. You're just kind of filling it in while you're playing rhythm. Um, or it could also be embellishment. kind of stuff you know so I could do we could talk about those kind of things um, uh, um, so you know and then maybe I don't know after this video drops that, uh, that I'm gonna do hopefully drop I'll drop it Thursday I I've been told that Thursday Friday at noon is a good time to drop a video so I like to drop them as soon as I have them ready but sometimes it's better to wait until a better time to drop them because you get that those people like going for the weekend or whatever Licks, chops, fills, hooks, yeah. Um, and I do need to come up with another dad gad video. Um, maybe I'm gonna do, um, I should write this down because I'm gonna need to do some research on this, but maybe I'll do like a, um, oh, here's my notes for the new video. Um, and I didn't get to all of them. Um, I, I purposely left some stuff off because it, I got to 25 minutes and I was like, yeah, this is really going to be a deep dive. So, um, uh, but I, I, I'm going to do a video that's like odd chords in dad gad. I don't know if that's what I'm going to call it, but um, interesting chords. That's an interesting looking baby, Mrs. Jones. Interesting. It, Naming videos is tough, and a good name can really help. And it's like, dang it, sometimes you name it wrong. Ooh, ooh I'm getting a little high from that Sharpie. <laughs> I don't mind saying, ooh. Hey, oh, Paul. When does a fill become a lick? Yeah, it, it uh, okay, that's a, a I, I always, when I think of a lick, I almost feel like a lick is independent. Like, a lick might be something that I would overdub in between a verse line, you know, between a lyric. A fill almost is more like within the rhythm plane. Like, for example, um, I can do it on this. Like, if I were to do something, like, you know, I'm in D or something, I'm playing a D. That would be like a fill. Right? Because I'm playing rhythm, but then I take a break from the rhythm to do a fill. But it could also be called a lick. It really, there is no rule on any of this. But a lick almost to me more feels like if I was the rhythm player was like doing this. And then I, you know, the other guitar player went. That would be a, a lick. Does that make sense? I don't, and again, that's just my, what I, you know, I bring to the definition. I, I yeah, I don't know. Yeah, exactly, Sam. Those are that's kind of my point. It's subjective, uh, so there's really no difference. 
uh, between hooks. Hooks now, hooks I would think of as something more compositionally, Sam. Like I wouldn't call a lick, a hook could be a lick. Like this is a, or a riff. Right, that's a riff and that's a lick and that's a, but it's the hook of the song. But Jimi Hendrix doing, you know, doing something like that, that, you know. That's not, that's not the hook. The hook, who knows what the hook is on a Hendrix song. It could be a riff, but it could also be the melody. Um, some songs don't even have like bona fide hooks necessarily, but a hook is whatever is kind of the most identifiable part of the song or, or, you know, I, like I say, like the beat it, that's the hook of the song. The melody in a pop song is usually the hook, the chorus melody, but beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it, no one wants to beat it. It's kind of a boring melody. It, the the hook of that song is the opening and the riff and and a lot of times in the 80s the hook could have been the video it wasn't even part of the music <laughs> it's like the thriller video is so cool everybody wanted to hear the song thriller just to watch the video and then on the radio they would visualize the video because the because of the you know when they played the song so yeah exactly Peroni I would say a, a hook would be something like that um, and uh, definitely, it's, a hook is going to be something that's recurring. Um, I always use the example: a hook is the is the thing you know that grabs people, and um, and I always say it gets the fifteen year old girls to call the radio station. Hey, can you play that song? It's Ella, Ella, Ella. Hey, hey, hey. And they're like, Oh, Umbrella by Rihanna. Sure, we'll play that again. You know, for the four hundredth time today. Um, <laughs> so that's you know that's my you know idea. It's like you got to have a song that's got to get you know back in the day but it's still true it's just different now it's now it's people like girls who instead oh they'll go oh i like that song i'll put it in my playlist that's you know how that's how uh shoot um taylor swift got 10 billion streams but 5 billion streams in one day <laughs> you know how much money that is i think 1 billion streams is 37 million dollars <laughs> so so you're, you're looking at, you know, she, she made $150 million the first day or something like that. Or at least the, the group, the team did. Um, hey, Bulldog is a great hook. That's one of my favorite Beatle riffs. It's really, I, you know, Sam, I almost did that as one of our mystery songs. Um, but I've always loved that. It's And it's, you know... Um, the song's not a bad song. It's just, it's more of a B-side than anything for the Beatles. Um, but it's a really good riff. Um, I would have loved to, you know, I loved, and I we had it on for Thanksgiving. Uh, we had it on, not Thanksgiving, we had it on the other day because we had people over. And I, sometimes we'll have the TV on. We got this, one of the uh, OLED TVs and it looks amazing. And I'll put like a walking, you know, like a, a 4K walking tour of Paris up on the thing and mute it, so, you know. Or I'll put the Beatles up there because that, man, it looks so good. I mean, they, they just filmed it so good. And so, so many of those images just like are so iconic. And so to have that running in the background, we so we did that. I had that going on. We have Disney Plus and I had that going on the other day. Um, but um, I wish there was, so, hey, Bulldog is on Yellow Submarine. Is that right? Um and I wish that the, that was, uh, they had video of them kind of coming up with that. I mean, it's, it was, that, uh, Get Back, just was so fascinating watching the process. You know, almost feeling like you're sitting in the room with them. It was that well edited. I mean, they did, did a great job filming it, but man, um, uh, what's his name? Did a great job, uh, uh, Lord of the Rings guy. Uh, ah, dang it, my brain. Yes, Joseph, exactly. Good, good licks off of the D chord. Um, you know, let me let me uh, think about that because um, rhythm, rhythm, rhythm riffing is maybe what I would call that. Rhythm riffing. I may do a video on that, and that way I can come up with some tablature and things like that. It maybe justifies 
I may do it, we can talk about it here too, but I may get a little bit more formal with it and come up with a, a video on it. Um, slides, yes, yeah, slides would do that. Uh, oh, the octopus garden riff is actually a very fun riff. But, okay, but so on that, see, so that's octopus garden. Is that also, is that Sergeant Pepper's? No, that's Abbey Road, right? Um, um, yeah, that's Abbey Road. And um, let's see, track listing. Okay, now Maxwell Silver Hammer, the hook on that one would be bang, bang, hook, done. Bang, bang, Maxwell Silver. Peter Jackson, thank you, Charlie. Charlie's like, come on, Tom, you can think of it. Oh, don't make me log, don't make me come out of lurking mode. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie. Oh, there's a, a tuna, tuna ad reference there. How many times have you heard that? Yeah, yeah, hooks, riffs, and fills. Yeah, I, I could. Yeah, actually, that's not a bad idea too. Thank you. I I do, I do need to film more videos. It's just like I said, the back end on it is just not as. It's just I I'm not seeing huge numbers on any of these, but but that's a hooks, riffs, and fills. What was the other one? Oh oh uh. Somebody said it earlier. There was Sam. You said it. Chops. Yeah, chops. I always think of chops as <laughs> Charlie. Sorry. Um, uh, what was the name of the? Oh, uh, that was um, uh, shoot. Um, Billy Preston. Great player. Uh, sad life though. Uh, hooked on drugs. Um, he actually. I, I mean, I, I Pee Wee Michigo at my church played with him. Pee Wee, Pee Wee toured with him. Um, but um, yeah, I would say that um, chops. When you say chops, uh, usually that's in reference to somebody. Like he's got great chops. Like he can really play. That's usually what I when I use the term chops. That's usually what I think of. Um, riffs and fills. Riffs. So I, I think of riff, so I, hooks are a songwriting thing, compositional, okay? Um, compositional. Riffs are fr usually freestanding. Almost like overdubs. And then fills are in between, is what I think. Ooh, I'm getting high from the Sharpie, in between rhythm parts. Okay, so, you know, kind of getting definitions right in my head, how I generally think of them. I wouldn't say those are hard and fast rule or definitions, but... <laughs> yeah, the Ollie's like, hi there, Charlie. Everybody say sorry, Charlie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Octopus's Garden is on Abbey Road, though, too, I think. Is it not? Yeah, it's also on... Uh, it's also on... Oh, John Lennon played the Moog synthesizer generated noise for the wind sounds at the end of I Want You, She's So Heavy. Yeah, it's, it's such a, it's, that's, I, Abbey Road is probably my favorite record of the Beatles. Maybe my favorite record of all time. Um, I mean, that's just, 
It's such a hard thing to say, you know, because like everybody goes, well, Desert Island, this, I'm like, you know what? You know, if you have your 10 favorite records and you, you have to listen to them for the next 100 years, you're going to get tired of them. <laughs> so. Um, oh, interesting. Okay. I have never heard that, Sam. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> Sorry, Bruce. <laughs> uh, yeah. Chops. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a term for that in musical terms. There's pizzicato, staccato. Um, and so classical circles, they would have different terms for that kind of stuff, but yeah. Also, um, chopping rhythm, you know, like uh, if I were to, like blues, you could say, oh, you know, um, oops, I don't want, want that, okay. Like, <laughs> chopping wood, that's called chopping wood. Jazzers, that's their terminology. Um, yeah, chopping wood is, is a jazz term for playing just like boom, boom, boom. And I've used that term before, I think, here. Um, but that's, it, and it basically stems from back in the day when you didn't even have electric guitars. You just had an arch top guitar with no pickup or anything. And you're with a 17 piece horn section, <laughs> like chopping wood. It's like, <clears throat> I mean, have I ever chopped wood? I have chopped down a tree. I had, my mom asked me to chop down a tree one time. It was probably about that big around it. And the ax I was using was like a hand ax and it was dull. <laughs> so my, I was like in high school. My wrist afterwards, I could barely like pick up a pencil the next day. It was like, oh my God. I mean, I was like, and I was doing the chop from the top and chop from the bottom and chop from the top and trying to get it to fall a certain direction and it totally didn't work. It, it hit the fence. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. My mom wanted the tree out for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know. Because now I think about it, I didn't even chop. I chopped it like at waist height. I have no idea why I did that. But maybe my mom just wanted me to wear myself out. Maybe I was being too much of an aggravation. Maybe it was punishment. I didn't see it as that. But chop cords. Yeah, yeah. Chop cords. That's very common. Yeah, all Beatle albums are good. Oh, someone. Someone's asking me, uh, what, one of the composers I work for, said, good grief, how do you say your last name? <laughs> it's straily. Not like it looks. <clears throat> All right. Well, you know, what's funny is we, we've got, it's, people are starting to show up again. Hilarious. 23 people. All right. Um, I am going to, um, yeah, that's true. A lot can be done with a B7. Yeah, yeah. There's all sorts of, you know. So I don't know. I, th those are some good ideas. I'll see what I can come up with. I, I'm going to, I want to mess around with the, um, um, I want to mess around with the um, uh, weird, some weird chords in dad gad. So um, I want to, I want to play around with that and see what I can come up with. So anyway, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with me and making my Monday morning uh, not lonely. <laughs> So, and thanks for checking out that Whamola. I may do a video for that too. So I have, I have a few things I can do videos on. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Yes. Good night all. Good night, John boy. <laughs> no worries, John. Thank you. Bye-bye.